another week of Little Church. We sure have been learning a lot, haven't we? Last week was my favorite week of all as we learned about the empty tomb and we got to eat some chocolate eggs to remind us about it. But this week we come to the final chapter in the book of Mark. We've talked about seeing Jesus as the Messiah, as the promised King. And we know that this is true because of the cross and the resurrection. So the question becomes whether we'll listen to his command and promise. Some people might think about this as the end of the story, but in some ways it's just the beginning. Did you know the story of Jesus and the words of Jesus are not just for us here and now. They are for all people across all time. And since that very first Easter, the good news about Jesus has spread right across the whole world. That's how it made it all the way here from 14,000 kilometers away and 2,000 years ago to you, right here, right now. But how on earth did that happen? Hmm. Maybe we can play a little game to help us understand. So in this game, we want to reach from one side of the room to the other. I can't even reach to the other side of this couch. So I want you to stand up and stretch your arms out as wide as you can. Can you touch both sides of the room by yourself? No? Hmm. We might need some help. Maybe someone is watching with you right now. If they are, you could hold hands with them and both stretch out wide and see if you can reach. Still no luck? Is there anyone else at home who you could get to help? Add them in too. Still no luck, huh? Maybe you could also grab some of your toys and have them join in your chain. Hmm. Add in as many people as you can. No, oh, some of you might have done it. See, the more people who you have to help you, the further you can reach. And that's kind of the same with the gospel. But instead of reaching out with our arms, we reach out with the story. We tell people the story and then they can tell others. And people doing that over many, many years has been how the story of Jesus has come to you. Have a think. Who is it that has told you about Jesus? Maybe you could ask them where they first heard about him. Well, we can not only tell people about the story of Jesus, we can also sing about it. And that's what we're going to do now with our friend who is all the way from the other side of the world at the moment over in England. Some of you might remember her from when she used to be here at church with us. Let's go and meet her now. Hello, my name is Alana and welcome to my living room. We're going to sing a song together and it's called One, Two, Three, Four, Five, Jesus Christ is Now Alive. I think that you'll know the tune, so you should be able to sing along, but it would be good if you could do some actions as well. Now, I can't really do actions and play guitar at the same time. Hmm, what can we do about this? That's better. So follow me for the singing and follow me for the actions. Great, let's go.
wow, how great is it that we get to sing together about Jesus with someone who's so far away? Thanks, Alana. Even though Alana's in England, really, really far away, we can know that Jesus is her king just like he's our king. Isn't that cool? It doesn't matter where we go in the world, Jesus will still be our king. Well, now it's time to settle in and make sure you've got your Bibles. Sit down and get comfy because today we're going to read together from Mark chapter 16. Hi, my name's Jessica and today I'll be reading Mark chapter 16. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter. He's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as I told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Hi, I'm Megan. Have you ever had good news that you're busting to share with others? I remember so clearly the day that I lost my first tooth. It was the middle of the night and I had been waiting for this tooth to fall out so long. It was actually hanging by a thread and I was using my tongue to try and get it out. Well, at midnight, I succeeded a little too well. I actually swallowed it, but I was so excited that I could not wait until the morning. So I woke everyone in my household even my dog, to tell them the excellent news. My first tooth was gone! You see, good news should be shared. Over Easter, we heard some fabulous news, the best news ever. But the big question is, what happened with this good news? Was it passed on? Well, the book of Mark finishes with this story in the strangest place. We've just learned that Jesus is risen, that his tomb is empty. But the first ones to know this great news said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Well, that's an odd place to end. Not with a party, not with a celebration, but with fear. Mark ends leaving us wondering, is that it? Is that the end of God's spectacular rescue story? Well, just as Becky said, the story doesn't end here. It could have ended here, but it continued on and on and on right to us today. And it's still going today. Let's see how it goes on. Well, you see, Jesus did meet the disciples just as he said in Galilee. And when he did, he left them with a very important job. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of people from every nation. The word disciple means follower. Jesus wants his followers to tell people all over the world how to be rescued from sin and death by trusting in Jesus' death and resurrection. Then those people who believe would become disciples of Jesus too. Good news should be passed on. Well, did they listen to Jesus? Did they follow the job that they were given? <laughs> they did. In fact, if you are a follower of Jesus, it's because of the faithfulness of Christians to this job over the last 2,000 years that you have heard about Jesus and become followers too. Amazing. The good news goes on and on and on. But it can be scary too. We can be scared that people won't listen to us, that people will make fun of us. And yet Jesus makes a beautiful promise that he will go with his disciples as they go out on mission. But hang on, didn't Jesus go back to heaven? Isn't he there now? 
So how will he do that? By sending his Holy Spirit to live in us, helping us to courageously continue the mission. We're not alone. And all around the world, there are people sharing the good news about Jesus. Some we have seen on this video today. Good news should be passed on. So here we are at the end of Mark. And my question for you is, what will you do with the great news of Jesus? I'm praying for you and the church around the world that we would continue to faithfully give ourselves to the job of sharing the good news in whatever way we can. Dear Lord, I thank you that we can meet again um, in a space to pray and just to have some time to spend with your word. And I pray, especially this, this week for the whole world and, and our journey of sharing your word with them. And I pray that you give everyone out there strength and courage, knowing that you are with them in this journey to share your word with everyone, with all the corners of the earth. And I pray that you help give us the strength we need to talk to others about your word and your great and your great plan for everyone. And I pray that you give us the courage to do so openly and with strength and kindness and really showing your love. In your name I pray. Amen. Thanks, Lola. Well, earlier today, we got to sing with a friend who's in England. Now we're going to practice our memory verse for the final time. And we have some special friends to help us all the way from Chile. Hi, Michael. Hi, Joe. Well, we've been practicing our memory verse for a while now. So I hope you know it off by heart. But as we sing it together with Michael and Joe, Lola is going to teach us how to say it by signing in Auslan as well. Watch what she does and then you can join in once you get the hang of it. Yes, we do. Son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life on the Son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. As a ransom for the many. Mark 10 45. Son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. For the Son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. Ransom for the many. As a ransom for the many. That's Mark 10 45. Thanks, Charles. That was fabulous. It's so wonderful being able to speak with people so far away, isn't it? Well, we also have some other shout outs for people who aren't quite so far away, but who we still haven't seen in person for a little while. Hi to the Lim family, including Elias, Jude and Rupert. Also a big hello to Tashi and Hugh Brigden. We hope you're all enjoying your school holidays and having some fun times together at home with your families. Well, that's a wrap for us this week. And we've now finished off our reading of Mark together. Give yourself a big pat on the back. Maybe you can go and tell someone today about what you've learned. Now, I won't see you next week because we're having some holidays at home ourselves. But Little Church will be back the week after, and we're really looking forward to seeing you then. For now, I'll leave you with a song about how Jesus rocks the world. Bye. Jesus is the King of
kings Jesus rocks the world Jesus is the Lord of lords Jesus rocks the world He rules the earth He rules the sky He's the holy God on high Every tongue is gonna cry Jesus rocks the world Cause he made it and his kingdom will endure When Jesus Christ returns he's gonna rock it to the core So get ready Jesus rocks the